Alright boys and girls, we are going to be starting on chapter 2 today. Chapter 2 is all about dividing whole numbers. Section 2.1, which is your homework tonight, is on specifically where do I put the first digit when I'm solving a division problem. Now be sure to take great notes, pause and stop when you need to. Write any questions that you might have down in your notes so that you may ask them tomorrow during class. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first problem that you see that I have here for us is 128 divided by 8. Now, there are a couple of ways that I can write it. I can write it this way, as you see, with a division symbol, or I can write it as a fraction, 128 over 8, because as you might remember, I told you that a fraction bar is nothing but division. So it literally means the same exact thing. 128 over 8 is the same as 128 divided by 8. So another way that I can write it, and the final way I can write it, is with something I call a cave. It looks like this. That might be another way you've seen a division problem. Again, they're all the same exact thing. They mean the same exact thing. You will get the same exact answer by solving that problem. Now going back to the second way, the fraction, 128 over 8. The way that I remember what number is my numerator and what number is my denominator if we're talking about how to change these into a fraction, or to change this into a fraction. Here's what I always remember. The numerator goes in the cave. So if we're talking about taking a fraction, this 128 over 8, right? And I want to turn it into a division problem, I have to identify, well, you know, sorry, but which number goes inside my cave? Your numerator is always going to go in your cave. Always. I have a little song that I made up to a little nursery rhyme to help me remember that. It goes, the numerator goes in the cave. The numerator goes in the cave. Hi, ho, the Dario. The numerator goes in the cave. Please make sure you have that in your notes. Do not put in your notes that the bigger number goes in the cave. Because while that is the case right now, that will not be the case later on when we move to decimals and fractions and we're talking about dividing those numbers to get a number smaller than one. Okay, that may not necessarily always be true. So we want to make sure that we're using the right terminology. Our numerator is always the number that goes in the cave. So everybody has a different saying to help them remember the steps on how to divide a problem. I know there are certain fourth grade teachers who use different ones. You're more than welcome to use whatever you need to to help your brain remember. I'm going to show you how I do it. I say D M F and then a down arrow. These are my steps for dividing a number, the long division, okay? Now, well, what do they stand for? Mine stands for, in my brain, the way I remember, is dancing monkeys slide down. Let's show you that again. Dancing monkeys slide down. So my D stands for divide. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply. Then I'm going to subtract. And then I'm going to bring it down. So I say dancing monkey slide down. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Then we go right back up and do it again if we have to. So let's see how this goes. 
I'm going to say in my brain, if I count by eights, will I hit one? The answer is no. It will not go in. So eight divided by one, we're going to put a zero. Above that one, we then I move down the line. Now I'm going to multiply. I'm going to multiply my number on the outside times my number that I just got when I divided. So 8 times 0 is 0. I put it right down there, right below the 1 that I just tried to divide. Check it off on your list. Move to the next step. And my next step says subtract. Still working with my 1, I'm going to subtract my 1 and my 0. So 1 minus 0 is 1. Check it off my list. My last step is to bring it down. You are going to bring down the next digit under the case that you have not worked with yet. So we worked with the 1, so now I'm going to move to the 2, and I'm going to bring on down my 2. I only bring down one digit at a time. I do not bring both of those digits down. I just bring down my 2. Check it off my list. And then I go right back up to the top again. Now, we're not dividing 8 by 1. We're dividing 8 by 12. This 12 that I have down here. So in my brain, I'm going to think 8 goes into 12 how many times without going over? So I count by 8s until I hit or pass 12. 8. 16. Oh, I already passed it. Can't go past it, so I only have 1. So 8 can only go into 12 one time. I put it on top of that 2 above my case without going over. Check it off my list. Go down to the next one. Multiply. So I'm going to do 8 times whatever digit I just put on top of my case. So 8 times 1. Well, 8 times 1 is 8. Check it off my list. Go on down. My next step is to subtract. I'm going to subtract the 12 that I have from my 8. 12 minus 8 is 4. 12 minus 8 is 4. Check it off my list. Go down to the next step. And I'm going to bring down the next digit under my cave. I'm going to bring it all the way down to live with that 4. So now I have a 48 there. After I bring it down, I'm going to go all the way back up to the divide. And I'm going to say 8 can go into 48 how many times without going over? Well, 8 can go into 48. Let's see. I have 8. 16, 24, 32, 40, and 48. So 8 can go into 48 six times. Check it off my list. Multiply. Again, I'm multiplying my number on the outside of my cave by the digit I just put above my cave. So 8 times 6 is 4.
48. Check it off my list. My next step is to subtract. 48 take away 48 is 0. Check it off my list. And then I'm going to bring down my next number, my next digit, underneath my case. Wait a second. There's no more digits that I have not used underneath my case. I've already used the 1. I've already used the 2. And I've already used my 8. Once there are no numbers underneath your case, you are finished solving this problem. So the answer, or the quotient, of this problem, 128 divided by 8, is right here. It's sitting on top of the cave. So my answer is 16. Now one of the reasons why I love division so much is because there is no reason that you should ever get a question wrong. Say what? Correct. You should never get an answer wrong because you can check every single answer that you have on a division test and know that you are 100% right. Watch what I do. To check my answer, I am simply going to take whatever I got for my answer. In this case, our quotient was 16. And I'm going to multiply it by the number that I have on the outside of my case, my 8. Now I take these two numbers and I multiply them together. If I solve my division problem correctly, then the product of 16 and 8 should be the number that is inside my case, my 128. So let's check and see if we did our problem correctly. And as you can see, it perfectly matches what is in my case. So there's never a reason to get any, 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 any division problem incorrectly. Because if you multiply it and get the wrong number, a number that doesn't match up, all you do is redo the problem and find out what you did wrong.